What's going on everybody? Welcome to T3G. I'm Full Throttle and I'm Cerebro. And today we're going to be doing that review that we promised two days ago? Three days ago? Several weeks ago? Several days ago. <laughs> we're doing a review about Black Hat uh, and basically we're going to try to stay as on point as possible I think. If at all possible. If at all possible. <laughs> we like our tangents but we'll see what happens. So yeah we're just going to go ahead and start it out real quick. Uh, so Black Hat yeah. stars... Um, uh, Helmsworth, uh, yep, Chris, Chris, Chris Helmsworth, um, as a super pro, like ultra major hacker. So he's he's the guy, you know, he's the guy. He's in prison right at the beginning of the movie for some stuff that they never really get into. Uh, but that's kind of not neither here nor there. It's really that's like yeah. to give him that credibility. Yeah. Like he's been to, to heavy prison. Yeah. Because of what he did, and that's well, where this movie. They do kind of... mention in the beginning why he is in there, because they say that you know you want us to release a guy that um, hanged banks and caused major chaos or something like that. Some something along those lines. It was right, mentioned right. in the beginning, but they don't really go into much detail. Sure, she just sure. kind of says it why he's in there. Uh, but overall, that's that's yeah, what he is. He's a major hacker. He's just right. he's that. And, um, the the basic plot is that. Someone, um, someone ends up hacking a nuclear reactor in Japan. No, I'm sorry, China. China. In China. China. Um, and massive explosion, lives lost, property damage, all that kind of stuff. Yep. And then, like a day later, they do this, they do not the same thing, but they do another attack on the stock market, uh, driving up the price of soy, uh, which is kind of a innocuous thing that, you know, a, a lot of people bid on it, a lot of people uh, trade soy. Uh, Soy futures, as they call it. Um, yeah. I don't know what I know of the stock market. I learned from this movie and uh, trading places. So that's about the extent, right? <laughs> <laughs> the extent of what I know. I don't even think I, I've seen Boiler Room, but it was so long ago that. I have it. We watch it. Watch it. We'll do a review yeah, on Boiler Room. We'll do a review. <laughs> um, but so what happens is that they have this very major attack, and uh, the Chinese uh, captain, I think he is a captain, right? Captain, I think he's, he's definitely higher up in the force. Uh, so the Chinese captain like a special agent, uh, actually, is, a, is a friend of his from MIT. Yep. And uh, he recognizes a code that they kind of co-wrote uh, in, in MIT as a joke. Right. And uh, he goes and says, listen, to get this figured out, we're going to need this guy. Right. And they say, you know, are you nuts? And that's, you know, when that whole exchange happens, like, this guy did X, Y, and Z. You want mm -hmm. us to bring him out? And uh, he said, we're not going to do it otherwise. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna do spoilers? I think we do spoilers. Oh yeah, yeah. Spo so, well, spoilers, spoilers ahead. This, this. Yeah. So what we yeah. talked about right now is like the first ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. Spoilers ahead. We're talking about the whole thing. And we're gonna be talking about the whole thing. And I think let's let's first start out with uh, let's do Chris Chris Hemsworth. Let's let's start out with his acting and and his portrayal of of that role. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we haven't seen Chris in a lot of roles where it requires him to be. I guess. Extremely intelligent. Would we want to go with that wording? I mean, I get yeah. Going on yeah, I mean, lines. we've we've so so far nothing overtly intelligent. We've seen stuff obviously where he's playing characters who would have had to have intelligence to get where they are, right? But not not overtly intelligent as far as just like that's their main thing, right? Um, and even in this, they kind of made it. Because he was in prison, he he had this you know personal mantra of bettering his mind and body. Right. So that's why you know it's kind of the explanation of why he's a badass is because all the whole the whole time he was in prison, he's been learning and he's been working out. Right. right. So that's kind of why he's a badass. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in in the movie, I personally, in my opinion, I think his portrayal as a hacker, uh, as somebody with the capability of being top dog in the hacking world and and being able to do what he's done i think he did an overall good job in my opinion um they made him more of a badass than i would have thought of him being right um but once again like you stated they do explain why he's such a badass because of the prison he's in and what he's had to endure and what he did while he was in prison so and plus that he kind of gives a little idea of what he was before he got into prison as well Right. Um, which it was just a fight in a bar. It was a bar fight, but it, needless to say, the bar fight ended so bad that he ended up spending, I think, three years in jail because he beat the guy half to death or something like that. I don't remember. Or that, something but... like that. I can't remember. I know he went to jail 
for that, got out, did something really bad with hacking, and then went to jail for the hacking job. Yeah. So overall, like I said, his portrayal as a hacker is really good. He does a great job uh, making you think that he actually has the capability of doing what he's supposed to be portraying. And uh, But like I said, I feel like, I don't know, maybe just a little too tough for me uh, for the role, but but at the same time, once they explain why he's such a, a tough guy, why he's such a badass, uh, it kind of works into it. So it doesn't, at, at first it seems like he might be too tough, like he might be portraying it too tough, but once they explain why he's such a, a tough guy, why he can do what he can do, then you understand that, okay, he's actually playing the character correctly. Right. Uh, I think at first, like I said, when you watch it, you're like, okay, he's, you know, he's acting really tough. Like he can basically beat anybody's ass, like he, the way he talks to the cops, you know, all that. So, uh, but once, like I said, once they explain it, they it, right. it makes it makes up for it. Right. It, it, it's not it's not you know hard assness for the sake of hard assness. Like it, there is a lot of movies out there. It's, what I think it is is it's really hard to bridge that gap of a cerebral movie and an action movie. It's right. really hard. I mean, the, the line is very, very thin, and as soon as you cross it, it it's over. Then you're, you're watching one kind or the other. Right. You know, there are very many action movies that really want you to think that it's, like, a thinker, but it's definitely not because it's an action movie. Like, it has concepts in it that could be intelligent and of a higher level of thinking necessary, but it's mainly, like, fight scenes and explosions. Mm -hmm. Um... Whereas then you have movies that are, again, they're meant to be both, but then it ends up going more towards the thinking side. Like, there's right. a lot of conversation, one or two really good fights, and then a lot of conversation, a lot of, you know, the the, the mental stuff. Um, so like this, and um, I would say, a couple, not all, but a couple of the Mission Impossible movies do a good job with it. Um, the first one in particular was really good. There was, yeah, yeah, there was yeah, yeah. On top of the action, there was just a, a lot of really good, intense, dramatic scenes. An explanation of what's going mm -hmm. on and who who messed up where or who mm -hmm. did what to cause And that's, and that's why I think they, they did a really good job with that here. They had, you know, some fight scenes to kind of bridge the gap. Uh, so I think they, they put in the fight scenes and put in the action where they should. It's not, it's not really forced. Um, no, not it, at it's, all. It's like, you know, he goes from hacking and, like, figuring out that this guy's watching them to, you know, he leaves the, the place where he shouldn't have been in the first place. Like, he walked in the back of a restaurant, he comes out, and a bunch of dudes want to beat his ass. Well, yeah, you walk where you're not supposed to in a neighborhood that you don't belong in. Right. Like, you're about to get your ass beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, I mean, obviously, he was set up because he was being watched, so those guys didn't come in just on accident. They came up because sure. he, told, he tells him, uh, after he says that, you know, who are you, he, he kind of responds, like, go fuck off and die, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's why you see those guys come in because he's basically set them up for it. Which, in all honesty, even during that altercation, yeah, is that the correct word I'm trying to use? Um, he doesn't get away scot free though, doesn't? I, I'm pretty sure he actually gets a little hurt in that in that part of the fight. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was four, it was four or five guys on one. So on I mean, one, he was yeah, bound to so, he was bound I mean, to take fight, a hit here and there. The, honestly, the fight was very realistic to me. The way they did the fight? It wasn't like he's this badass kung fu guy that like doesn't get touched. He he's a street fighter. Was, he's a straight street fighter, and you could tell by this fight that that's what just happened. It was a fight that literally just happened, and it could have happened in a bar or whatever. And it was just two guys going at it. Right. And in this case, four several versus guys. One. Yeah, four several guys one. going but at it. But regardless, it definitely felt like a real fight that you might see actually. In, in real life, which and, was awesome, and it was set and it was set up in such a way that it was kind of it was the the justification for the conversation. So in the in the in there in that restaurant is where he told her, you know, I was in this, you know, I was in prison and bettering my mind, my body, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this fight happens to right. kind of justify the fact of what he just said. Right. Like he's definitely done a good job with bettering himself and making sure he's he's you know top condition yeah. as he could yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's that's I think the big aspect of it because. In the beginning, in the jail, you see him with a book. You see him with the headphones, trying to, you know, block out all the noise that's outside in the prison, where everybody's screaming, yelling, swearing, and where he's just trying to relax in his own world and 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 concentrate on reading the book, knowledge. And then even when he gets put away, 
uh, in solitation for doing what he did in the beginning, what they caught him for, um, you still see him like at first he's he's calming himself down because obviously he wants to flip out, but then he looks around where he's at, he calms down, and then he starts working out, which is the body part. So it, it, it really shows you that this guy really has done that. You know, that, that first impact at the beginning of the movie plus what he tells you in that scene mm -hmm. it, it really you can see that those go together and, and and that tells you okay yeah this guy's done that i mean that's what he's done that's that was his whole thing in prison so. right and it, it, and it really speaks to the script because the script, the script was really good yeah i think the there was really no wasted dialogue there was really nothing that i was kind of like man you could have <laughs> gone without saying that or doing that um but the only thing i didn't like uh was some of, some of the shaky camera. Like, you didn't really like the shaky camera at all, but there was a couple spots where, like, right at the beginning where the captain is kind of just running running down the stairs, right. and they just had somebody, like, following with a shaky cam. And I don't think that was necessary. Now, in some of the fight scenes, the chase scenes, yes, right. uh, that definitely increases the dramatic element for me. Right. But you could definitely have lost that. Um it could have been less. It definitely. It could have been less. There was definitely at some points where it felt like it was just enough of a shaky cam, where in some scenes it felt like it was a little too much. Uh, in in the fight scenes, I felt like there was a little too much. But at the same time, like there were certain fight scenes that it was just fine. You know, you didn't really realize yeah. it was happening. So it just. It, it depends. Like, there was one part where they're chasing, I think, one of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And it was just all, like, you could see the cameraman's, like, trying to follow them, like, running with them. And that's the point of the shaky cam. And it, in that particular chase scene, it felt like a lot. I can't remember which one that was, but there was, there was a lot of chase there, there was a few chase scenes in there. And um, there's definitely one that you really noticed the shaky cam. And then there was also the other thing that I was almost worried about, which we talked about right when we got out of the movie. Right. They show basically. So let me let me preface yeah, well, yeah, that. Let yeah. me preface that for a second. So if you ever seen Hackers or any computer based movie ever, they show the digital world. Yeah. Uh, so in Hackers, it was these like giant data columns, like right, 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 right. That just isn't real, you right. know. Like it's just stuff. It's just like conceptual stuff to to show you uh, to kind of give you an idea of what was going on. Whereas in this movie, I think they did a really good job, but almost overstepped it. Almost. They they almost. so they what they end up doing is they they show you the device that they're entering basically. So at the beginning it was a, a router, a network router, a switch, right. uh, or actually it was a server. Server. It went, it was to, a it server, went, it went yes. to the processor. It was a server. So right at right before the the attack, they show they kind of zoom in and it goes in. It's obviously all CG, but it zooms in down to the circuitry level and then yeah. further down into the processor to, to the microprocessor level and um, to the yeah, I mean, to like to, to the micro transistor yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. And we're down to this level where we're literally seeing electric impulses, which I thought was really cool because it was a completely different take on that. You know, you're you're seeing effectively what's really happening. Right. Um, and they did. It was kind of like a about a minute, minute and a half about of that minute, right at the yeah, beginning. About a minute, and a minute and a half, right in the beginning, literally. It was and then like they, one when of they the did the thing. second, when they did the second attack, the, the se same thing happened. And immediately, as soon as they did it for the second attack, in my head, I kind of thought, "Man, if this is what's going to be like, I am out." And I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was thinking the same thing. We didn't mention that while we were in the movie. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't want to talk during the movie. But as soon as we got out, I told them that same thing because. That's what I was worried about. My whole thought process when I saw it for the second time, I'm like, if this goes on for the whole movie, this is going to be a bad movie just because of that. Right, because you can definitely that's overdo only, that. You yeah, can you can never overdo, overdo it. Because that's, that's where the cheesiness factor in Hackers comes out yeah. of. Is that There's a lot of that in Hackers where yeah. you're like flying through data clouds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, one would have been plenty. I don't mind that they did two. Um, but if they did anything over that, it would have been too much. So I think they just, I think if, if by any way or chance or for, I almost feel like that it's a possibility they might have had a few other ones and they realized it was too much and probably cut it out. It's quite possible. It's, and it's one it's of those things that possible. it's easy to cut out because it, it's really kind of pointless. But I, what, what they did do, and I, they might not have had more, honestly, because they did it for the two attacks. Right. And those were the only two attacks that were carried out, really. Um, the two, like, official attacks. Right. Um, so the whole setup was that this guy, they actually never really, did they name him? I don't think they named him. I don't think they ever it just this, names. This guy, possibly, like, Eastern European, 
Um, it's and, possible. Yeah, maybe Russian or something. And he he attacked the 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 nuclear facility as a test run of attacking the particular type of uh, water pump that they use. Right. Because it's it was going to, it, the the main attack was going to happen in Jakarta, which is uh, Malaysia. Malaysia, yeah, and, and Malaysia is the highest exporter of tin, and these tin mines use the same type of pump. So he wanted to to basically flood this entire uh, plane where they where they mine tin, right. uh, several planes actually where they mine tin to drive up the price of tin. So what he did was he drove up the price of soy to make some quick cash. Right. To then which he made uh, seventy four million. Seventy four million, yeah, and then to fl and he the plan was to flip that. And then when the price of tin skyrocketed, he would have bought seventy-four million dollars in tin at you know price now. Hit the button tomorrow, sold it all at billions of profits. Yeah. Um, but we did end up, you know, that was obviously stopped. That's right. kind of the that was that was that's the, really the only happy portion of the ending. Yeah, the one thing that I kind of and we both agreed on is like it is a happy ending, but it's not a happy ending. And I know that makes zero sense because you can't have both. But in this case, you really did have both. And this so, is where yeah. more spoilers go ahead. So basically, what ends up happening is Chris, Chris Hemsworth character steals the seventy four million from the hacker. They find out which bank he's uh, holding the money in and do a uh, electronic transaction where he takes the money to basically get the guy to meet him somewhere to because he wants to kill him. Um, should we say why he wants to kill him? I mean, we, yeah, we're, we're spoiling we're, 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 we're literally we're spoiling, literally that's spoiling the, the whole So what happens, so... I, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> so what happens is basically... We'll start with the, th with the thing with the, the NSA. Because that's kind of where the whole like final act happens. Okay, so what happens is Chris Hemsworth's character, uh, they grab the hard drive out of the nuclear facility that got hacked first and blew up. Uh, they grab a hard drive out of it, but they had to wait so long because of the nuclear um, explosion. They had to wait for it to cool down. And then they went in, got this hard drive. Now, the problem with the hard drive was because it was an enclosed thing, it survived, but it still was corrupted to the point where they needed a special software to get data off of it that basically looked like it might have been uh, unretrievable. Uh, but then he goes ahead and asks the FBI agent that released them, hey, when I got caught, I re erased data to, to the point where it was unretrievable, but yet they retrieved the data and I got put away. How did you guys do that? And she explains to him that NSA has a specific program that is capable of retrieving data that is supposed to be permanently lost. So, she contacts the NSA. Called Black Widow. Yeah, called Black Widow. It was, yeah, it was called Black Widow. The, the program was called Black Widow. She contacts the NSA to get that program, to get approval, to use that program to get this hard drive to tell them where the IP address came from so but, that way they can track the guy. But the reason, but the NSA's like, well, you're working with A, one of, like, probably the best hacker in the universe, right. and B, a foreign nation because this is a, a China, Chinese. China. This is a Chinese. And they're uh, in China. They're calling yeah. from China. Yeah, this is a Chinese U.S. kind of joint operation because the attacks happen on both sides, and so he's like, yeah, like even if I wanted to, I couldn't let you have it, and I don't want to. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because they they worried that either the hacker would provide it to China or China would get their hands on it somehow. Right. So that being said. Basically, uh, Chris Chris's character says, "Well, listen, you know, he he's a good guy. In in heart, you can tell he's a good guy." And it's, it's funny because his name in the movie is kind of like his name. It's like, it's it's I don't know. It seems very similar to me. I forgot. I yeah, you gotta up. look. Yeah, look it up. I'll look that. Up. But basically, he he is a good guy. He wa he doesn't want these attacks to keep happening, especially because it's you know it's destroying people. It's 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 hurting other people. And it is his code that's also being used. Um, so basically, what Hathaway. he what he Hathaway, yeah. So basically, what ends up he tells the FBI agent, "Listen, I can hack the NSA and get this program, so we can get this IP. We need this IP address to track the guy." So basically, he tells them to leave the room, so they can't say that they saw him do it. And uh, he basically hacks the NSA, gets the program and gets the IP address, finds out about the whole uh, Malaysia thing for the tin. Uh, but right before 
uh, right after they find out about Malaysia, that the IP address came from there. Um, the NSA contacts the FBI agent and tells them that you know they found out that he hacked it and they want them they want him back in America ASAP so he can go back to jail basically uh, because his thing his 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 contract's been revoked yeah and uh, and so what happens then is by that time the guy they're chasing well one of his henchmen puts a tracker on his best friend's his China uh, Chinese. Um, uh, what is he? Yeah, I guess he's like a, he's a yeah, he's just like a special agent. The yeah, the Chinese representative right, in this matter. The Chinese representative matter. in this matter. His friend in the movie. Um, he's they track and put a tracker on his car. Um, they basically drive off to get Chris's character away from the FBI agent so he doesn't get sent back. They were gonna let him escape. So um, him, yeah, him, him, and Hathaway were gonna go together to Jakarta to figure out you know the rest of the story here. And then as they're saying their goodbyes, like he goes, he sits down in the car, his sister, who is the romantic interest, because of course you have to have a romantic interest. Of course. The, you know, the guy's sister, she goes in for the hug with uh, with Helmsworth, and then just like the car just explodes. The guy with the rocket launcher takes out the car, they fall, she freaks out, of course. And then for whatever reason, the two U.S. agents are just like on the scene because to try to like... Because they were following yeah, them. Yeah, so, so they, they, they go to around. back them up. Right. They go to back them up, come out of the car for some reason without taking cover, which I guess logically speaking, that's not that's not a great part of, part of the script. But they, they come out of the car without taking cover and, you know, the automatic machine guns, of course, mow them down. Right. Uh, <laughs> Even though they do get a few of the bad guys, but yeah. The, the yeah, they take out a couple of them and the, the guy, the, the, the his, like, supervisor agent, who was kind of his, like, shadow so he yeah, wouldn't run away. Yeah. Um, who was he played by? He was the... He, so, T uh, T T one thousand from T Terminator two, uh, that was him, right? Maybe. Well, no, I'd have to look at. I I'm don't pretty think sure that, that I was him. That was. So basically, uh, he he's like, towards the end here, uh, him and his partner, the uh, chick FBI agent that. Uh, oh my mistake! It's Holt McCallany. Uh, McCall yeah, McCallany. Uh He is from. What did I just watch him in? Losers, Fight Club. No, I guess he is in Losers. Um, what do I know him from? What's what's the thing he's from? Which actually I enjoy Losers. Ah, oh, it's killing me now. Cause he's from something very specific that I should remember, but for some reason I don't. So basically, uh, the two FBI agents they get a few of the bad guys when they come in. They get killed. And uh, Hemsworth and uh, the, his love interest, his best friend's sister, they run away from the scene. They get away from the bad guys. And uh, basically from there on, it's a revenge story. So Hemsworth wants revenge for losing his friend. Uh, get, and plus on top of that, he wants to stop the terrorist as well. I mean, they, they want to stop him. So what ends up happening is Chris Hemsworth's character hacks the guys, finds out where the account is. Hacks it, gets $74 million. They find out this all, basically this is, we just told all this to explain the ending. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. So, he gets the $74 million, he finds the guy, and, you know, he gets his revenge. They keep the $74 million, and him and his girlfriend now are together. But, here's why it's not a happy ending. So, it's a happy ending because they have $74 million and they're together. But you can still tell by the ending, they're still definitely on the run looking over their shoulders. They're trying, you know, you can see a camera focusing on them, like an a, a a airport camera, a security camera, like focusing on them. Mm -hmm. So you can still see that they're still going to be on the run. They're definitely, their lives are done because they're, they got to get away from here. Also, his best friend is dead. Like, there's no coming back from that. His best friend is dead. So is her brother. So this is all happening right after so you can see that they're still not happy from the loss and they're also trying to figure trying to stay hidden so there's you don't see a smile you don't see a happy ending even though technically it is a happy ending because they get the bad guy but it's not a happy ending because of the loss and they're still on the run so yeah they got 74 million dollars but anytime they actually right. get 74 million dollars well, there's that. I mean, I'm sure he can keep his trail hidden. Well, yeah, but it's, it's very much a bittersweet end. You know, it's, yeah, it's yes. Did they stop the like? Did they stop the initial 
you know, the antagonist. Yes, yes. yes the, 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 the story has resolved itself. Right. However, their story is just in a much worse place. You right. know, her her brother is dead, his best friend is dead. You know, like you were saying, they're always going to be on the run. Like, there is no settling down, there is no, you know, commuted sentence, which is what his uh what his you know, his deal was. It's very much that's it. Yeah. Over. Like yeah. game over. You just have to be always on the move. And it's it's very much um, kind of not quite not quite like the end of Born because Born Identity I feel was much a much cleaner end. Uh, it was a much happier end. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Born Born ending the third one with uh, Matt Damon. Uh, it was a lot happier ending because she told. Oh, him I just I just meant the first one. Oh, the first one because he went he he found the girlfriend right, which was cool. He did find the girlfriend, but he was still on the run. Right, he was on the run. Yeah, so that was yeah. kind of the, the the setup there, and you know, obviously in two you see what happened with right, you know right. that. So that's kind of where this leaves you is like they're always going to be on the run. Like somebody looking for him eventually could get to him, and eventually could get to her. Right, uh, which is again again along the lines of Born. So we're going to go over our thoughts, and then I'll ask us, there's a question on my mind that I want to ask, and we'll both answer and see how it works out. But I'll go ahead and go first. Basically, my thoughts about the movie, I thought it was a great movie overall. Uh, the acting was really good out of everybody on that cast, I think, personally. I think everybody did a good job. Uh, Chris Hemsworth definitely did his part of the job as being a lead in the movie. I think he did a great job. I didn't feel like anything was too overdone when it comes down to acting-wise or even script-wise. Um, there were some, you know, like you said, taking cover from the machine guns probably would have been a smart idea. Right. So there was kind of something like that, but there wasn't a lot of that. That would probably be the worst thing that you would have, honestly, that you could have probably said Yeah. was probably the worst part of the script is why they didn't, you yeah. know, that part of it. Uh, but overall... Great acting. Uh, the filming of it overall was great. I mean, like I said, the shaky cam, uh, it could have been a little less, but overall, I mean, you don't notice it. Once you get past those two scenes that feels like too much, after that, it doesn't feel bad at all. Um, the, the director did a great job, in my opinion. I mean, the movie overall was just a great movie. To me, it's definitely a go-see movie. Uh, I would say go see it at the theater. Um, it's not... you. You do have to be in the mood for this kind of movie. You can't just be like, I want to see a movie, let's go see this. And I don't think you might necessarily yeah, I don't, come I don't out think with it's the a... same reaction as we did. So right, I, I don't think, think it's an anytime movie. It's not an anytime movie. You definitely have to be in the mood for this kind of movie. What do you think of it? I really enjoyed it. Um, I think, you know, if, if we're going to go on a, on a star system like everyone else does... Um, I'd give it a solid four stars, honestly. Um, four out of four out of five. Four out of five stars. Four out of five. I, 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 I really yeah, enjoyed it. Um, there's really very little I can say negative about it. You know, it, it's a movie that I, you know, it's one of those things that will now be in in the library of if it's on, I'll watch it. Yeah. Um, if somebody suggests it, I'll, I'll watch, watch it. it. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely. not it's not going to be. I'm not going to avoid it, and it's not gonna. It's not like a, a one time watch. Right. There are some movies, um, that, even some that I own that I've watched and I don't want to watch them very often. Yeah. Uh, they're, you know, I even, even if I like them, even yeah, if I, I like them, too. they're a one time watch yeah. or a once in a long time. Uh, one, always my greatest example is, uh, Leon, the professional, the original, not the American version. Uh, so Leon, the professional is, you don't want, that's not something you watch like two, three times a year. Right. Like once a year is some, that's maybe, right. you know, like I haven't seen it in several years. So next time I see it, it's going to be a great watch. Right. Um, so I think that this this will be in the, definitely in the category of like if somebody says hey I haven't seen this let's see it you know it's on Netflix or whatever yeah definitely because I enjoyed it and I would definitely watch it again yeah. um, I would say if you are not if it's not on your radar if it's not um, already kind of if you're not already interested in it um, maybe wait for. For Dollar Theater? Either Dollar Theater or, or you know, DVD rental. Yeah, DVD rental. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, if you're not, like, we're both fans of Chris Helmsworth. So if you're not a fan of Chris yeah. Helmsworth, if you are not, I mean, and for the ladies, there is definitely a... <laughs> there is a... There is there's there's enough, like, man chest going on. Yeah, so, like... <laughs> you, you see the guy. Well, like, Erica was always, always complained about the first Thor. She's like, his shirt wasn't off enough. And I'm like, that's not what the movie was about. <laughs> <laughs> so sure, it was, it's not like shirtless Thor. It's yeah, just Thor. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's one of those things that... 
Um, I, I think anybody can enjoy it. I don't think there's anything that's going to like fly over anyone's head. Uh, there's just enough code to keep those of us who know about code yeah. to kind of entertained. Yeah. Um, they basically use some some Android slash Linux commands. Right. Um, I don't know the commands that they are using, so I don't know what they do. I don't know how legitimate they are. Yeah, I don't know. So how anyone anyone that knows either. more about that than me, please let me know. You know. If, yeah, absolutely. And if they're just like you know. Outputting, you know, hello there. <laughs> um, then you know, I, I don't know, but let me know. Um, but yeah, I would say I would say watch. Uh, I would say matinee, um, yeah. and uh, matinee or uh, or you know, wait for the second run. It's definitely a four out of five stars for me as well. I mean, it's not a perfect movie by any means, but that doesn't mean just because a movie doesn't have a lot of flaws doesn't mean it's close to perfect. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say it just makes it into the four star range. Yeah. Um, I would say you know. Three, you know, high three, high three and a half, you know, four star. Yeah. Um, it's not like a, a solid four. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think like what would be a solid four for me. Uh, I mean, like Born, Born would be a solid four oh, for me. For me, oh man, Born's almost, especially the first one's almost the perfect movie for me. So there is only one perfect movie for me, and that's I Iron said Man. almost a perfect. Movie. Oh no, I'm just saying that like Iron Man for me is the the gold standard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of a movie where like you could have had. Nothing else, and it would have still been great. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, now, here's my final question to you. Okay. And I kind of have a mixed opinion on my question. Would you mind a sequel? <sighs> now, it is 2015, and everything gets a sequel. Everything gets a sequel. Hot Tub Time Machine 2 is coming out this year. I just wanted you to pause on that and think about it for a but second. But although me and you, uh, I've never seen it and I don't care to see it and I don't know if you The first seen one? It. Yeah. Oh, it's entertaining. Oh, yeah. The first one is entertaining, but my beef with it is that it didn't need a It didn't need a sequel. Right. And they're doing it without John Cusack and I think John Cusack really kind of made that movie. Right, sure, absolutely. But uh so what are you thinking about this one? You think would a sequel ruin what the first one gave? I don't think it would ruin think? it. I don't think it would ruin it. I think I think it could be done. Mm -hmm. it, it it would be hard. It would be hard, but I think a sequel could be done. I think it could be done well. Yeah. I don't know about a trilogy because and that's that's the big thing is everyone tries to push their stuff to a trilogy right. now, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you have the material for it, I just don't necessarily think that this has the material for it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, it, and like I said, I have mixed feelings about that too. It definitely feels like it could have a not a trilogy, without a doubt. No, it doesn't feel like a trilogy movie, but it feels like it could have a sequel, showing how they finally, you know, fully get away, or you know, maybe have to battle their way through something else. I can see it happening just because they are on the run, so. I could, I could see, see it, it as a I could see it as a movie where he is not the primary character. I could see that as well. I could see that as a as um it's a, it's a weird example but like um <laughs> it's right there. Uh, <laughs> step up. Like step it's a stupid example but step up like the main dude from the first movie is in the second one for like 10 minutes and like the 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 girl, I think, from the second movie is, like, his friend, like, his younger friend, and he's, like, helping her along. So that's kind of, like, where this movie could go along that line. Is talking about he... Channing Tatum? Yeah, Channing Tatum. Talking about Channing Tatum. Yeah. The dude. The dude in the first movie. I forget his name. Everybody I didn't, I knows don't... Channing Tatum. I just forgot his name for a moment. Even though... Anyway, so I think, like, Helmsworth could be, because he's on the run, I just don't think he could be a primary player in, a, right. in another major situation. Um, what could happen... Is because here, here's the thing in this movie, everyone that was on his side is gone, right? So it's just him and her, yeah. It's just now, him and her. if it if somebody like killed her or got a hold of her, I could see a second movie coming out of that. Um, but I'm, I'm a little worried that if they go with the sequel, they would go into like the taken range where just like you just keep kidnapping the daughter it's it, I like, think it all did. at some point she has to learn how to fight <laughs> right i mean they definitely had a really good director on this one so uh i can't remember everything that he did i i know he worked with matt damon on green what is it called seriously i don't i don't know what i know mclaney from <laughs> 
Like it's, it's Regardless, I mean, the, <laughs> the director is really good. I know he worked with Matt Damon. I think he might be the uh, director from Born, actually. Maybe? Black Hat was directed by... Oh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery film. Ooh. I'm sorry, it's a mystery film? Kind of. <laughs> it's kind of got a little bit of a few things. Uh, okay, so... Action, uh, sorry, action thriller mystery. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, uh, Co-produced and directed by Michael Mann. Michael Mann. Michael Mann... Let's see. I know he did a few things career, that I really enjoyed. Not career, filmography. Filmography, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, let's say recently. Um... Miami Vice. That's right. Miami <laughs> Vice. He did Collateral too, which is no, nope. no, not Collateral. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. That was Miami Vice, the TV show. Uh, he did do do the movie. He did do the movie. Um, he did uh, Collateral with uh, uh, Tom Cruise. Hancock, which I, I wish there was a sequel. Uh, Ali. Okay. Ali. Okay. Yeah, now he's I, done. Yeah. He's done some good stuff. He did I do knew, Collateral. You're right. Yeah, he did Collateral with Tom Cruise as well. And I Heat. mean. So, so he went from Heat yeah. to The Insider in 99 to Ali in 2001. Like, he's he doesn't do a lot. <laughs> but he's done good movies, though. That's, That's true. I have so, loved Ali. And this was a good movie. Overall, this was yeah. a good movie. So, I would, yeah. So, I mean, comparing, comparatively speaking to, like, Hancock, uh, Ali, I don't know. Ali is kind of on a different level for me. That's not a movie. That's, like, a, a biopic. And biopics are a, if, on a if different... Done right. If they're done on a right, different plane for me, completely yeah. Completely different plane. Uh, but like comparing it to like a Hancock or Collateral, yeah, I would I would yeah. say you know like a th high, high three into the four range. This definitely has a Collateral feel to it. It's got the it's yeah. got the more like real light camera work and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, I mean like definitely some of the shots that you and there's a lot more practical effects done in this. There's not a lot. I mean I don't think there's much CG in this at all. No. I mean there is some obviously. Yeah, but, I mean just, but there's definitely a lot less than you would expect. I mean some of the shots that. As I'm watching it, you know, the, uh, there's a helicopter shot where they're coming out of the helicopter. The camera camera guy was obviously in the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's that, no I mean, question that, about that. Most there, of, this most was not like a uh, this was not like a set scene. No, this was like outside in a helicopter. Open the door. Yeah, most of the shots definitely seem like uh, most most of this movie definitely seems like it's practical uh, uh, practical uh, effects. Thank you. Wow, uh, I couldn't get it out there. Practical effects, uh, the only CG I think personally that it actually might, like the only CG is the two scenes where they show how it's hacked. I think that's the only CG in this uh, movie. Aside from the explosion? I don't yes. know, I think the explosion might be real too. I think the explosions might be actually legit, they're not CG. Uh, maybe. I can see those being real, but that overall that being said, I mean we're going too far into this. But yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> The director is definitely a good director. He's had quite a few great films and good films, and this is definitely one of those films. I just I want him to keep it as a single movie, but I can see a sequel coming out of this. You know what I think would be great? I think if, I think they could do a really cool series out of this. They could do a series. Like they could do a series and like go go along the idea of Black Hat. Go along the idea of. Uh, of the, the I mean, they do some stuff like uh, there's a show called Scorpio, which I just found out about like, two days ago, um, where literally it's, it's, yeah. it's a cyber crime you know unit, yeah. And that, that's kind of like that's kind of where they need to you know they could go with this, not yeah, need to, but they could go in, in a situation like that where, uh, and they could do a series of black hat movies that are completely different characters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because I think because black you, hat you play wasn't in that a name of. It wasn't a name of anyone. It was the the term. That's what the, the term the term is uh, is is as ancient as sci-fi writing. It's it's good guys and bad guys, white hats and black hats. Right. I mean, that's that's literally all it is. It's good guys and bad guys. So so while the movie is called Black Hat, you would in, it would indicate that it's a bad guy. Right. Uh, but he is. I mean, he is basically. I mean, he's not a. He he doesn't work for betterment of anything. He just does what he does to have fun. Which does effectively make him a black hat in this situation. Right. So yeah, overall, I mean, one final time, in my opinion, go see the movie if you're interested in action and technology hacking, any of that. Uh, it's definitely a movie you want to go see when you're ready to go see it. Don't go just to see. Oh, I just feel like seeing a movie. You might be disappointed if you just go in that way. This is definitely one of those movies you want to be ready to go see. So. 
I think that's yeah. pretty much it. I'll say matinee. Mat yeah, matinee, 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 or second run. Like I said, that to me doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad movie. It's just not. Just it's not for everybody. I always have to like when I go see a movie, I have to justify it. Like, was it worth the ten dollar ticket? Was and, it? Was is it? And also, is it something that literally you can say for sure that most people would enjoy it? Because you know, I mean, overall, well, you can even, say to me, if you see a movie, that. you can say most people would enjoy this movie. You know what well, I'm to, saying? I mean, to me, it's not even that. It's very much a matter of like. To me, was it worth the ten dollars? Right, was like, it worth the ten dollars? There, sure. I've gone to see movies where I come out and I'm like, I wish I hadn't spent ten dollars yeah, on that. Absolutely. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I would say uh, uh, matinee, a dollar theater, but yeah, definitely, definitely see it when you get a chance. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not gonna say go out and make sure you see it because, like, you know, like, like I we can't said, say it for sure. I mean, well, I like didn't we mind said, it's, it's not a price, but at the same time, yeah, I think to me it was worth the ten dollars. Right. I just don't think it would be it would be worth ten dollars to everyone. Sure. And um, it's not one of those things that like if it doesn't make enough money, like they won't make a sequel because that doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, this can stand alone as a movie. Yeah. And um, what, what whereas like when Pacific Rim two, Rim two comes out, you better go see it. I'll punch you in your mouth. Yeah, guys, if, if you get the opportunity, if you want to see it in a theater and there's it's still showing, go ahead and see it. Um, but, like I said, you have to be in the mood. But that's pretty much our review for it. Yeah, yeah. February's coming up. There's crazy oh good stuff coming out. There's going to be a lot of reviews. So you guys well, will see us. We'll see you guys then. Signing off.